Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how to route a product using a transport solution. That is, you can route a product based on where it's coming from, where it needs to go next, or its final destination. To get started, in the 3D world I have a layout open. It's a simple conveyor system. If I now go to the Process tab, in the Product Type Editor, I have two flow groups, metals and plastics. If we now look at the flow editor, both groups start at a feeder process which is located here in the 3D world. For metals I want to route them straight ahead to go to this sync process. For plastics I want to route them to the side to go to this sync process. Let's now create the links between these processes. So in our metals flow group, I'll select it here, we'll start at the feeder then go to this sync process. So I create a link between the two nodes in the processes and that link is being implemented using a conveyor. For plastics, I'll select their flow group. They'll start at the feeder and then go to this sync process, create the link, and that is being implemented using a conveyor as well. Now to route the products, let's select our divert conveyor, go to its properties, and at the bottom we have a routing rule section by default it's using a cyclic rule. I know that the feeder process will first make a metal can and then a plastic bottle. So for the first product let's route it straight ahead and the next product to the side. And Then the cycle will repeat itself. If I now run the simulation, here come the metal cans. So the first product is routed straight. and the next product is routed to the side and then the cycle repeats itself. So this is just an example of how you can use those existing rules you probably are familiar with in previous product versions. Let's now reset and for our routing rule let's change the psychic rule to be a type of transport solution rule. Oh -ho. This is a new rule available in routing rule behaviors in Visual Components 4.2 so I'll select the rule it asks me if I want to change the type. I'll click yes. And now for default we can keep that empty but add a new connection or rule. And what we're using now for our rule is we're either routing the product to the next transport node that is connected to this conveyor somehow directly. We can also route the product based on where it's coming from, its source, or its destination. Let's use the destination because in our example, once the products get here, they only have one more step to go. They either go to this process or this process here. For metals, we know that it needs to go to the process sync for metals. So we can select it here and then route it straight ahead. If we add a new connection, for products that need to go to the sink for plastics, we know we need to route them to the side. So this is our simple routing solution using the transport systems solution it creates for the products when they go through a process. So now if I run the simulation, our solution will still work for what we've implemented. The cans go straight ahead, the bottles go to the side. It's just that we're using a different rule. Instead of using cyclic, we're now using a transport solution rule. So it checks if the product can go to its destination from this conveyor. The metal can in this case has to go to this step here, so that's why it goes straight. Let's reset. And now for a different variable, let's try next transport node. In our case, we don't have to change anything for our rules here because the next transport node for our products are already defined here. They only have to go one step. So if we run the simulation, from the feeder to the sink, it's one step and that node is directly connected to our conveyor so it knows it can reach it. Same with the bottle, it can go up here. But let's get a bit crazy and disconnect this conveyor and this sink process from our conveyor system. So let's go back to our home tab and with the PMP command selected we can click the conveyor, hold the control key, and click our sync process, so now both of these components are selected. I can drag them away from the conveyor system to disconnect them. 
Now what we can do is add a process at this conveyor and this conveyor and have the products, the metals, be transported by a human worker. So what I'll do is go to my eCatalog panel and under Models by Type, I'll click Process Flow Components, add a From Process, I'm sorry, a From Conveyor Process Component, connect it to the end of the conveyor system here. I'll now add a To Conveyor Process and connect it to the start of the conveyor line here. Let's now add a resource. So under Models by Type, I'll click Process Resources, add a human worker, and now we have to add a controller for this resource. I'll now go to Process Transport Controllers, add a human transport controller, and in order to use the human worker, we have to connect it to the controller. So with the controller selected, I'll go to the Connect Interfaces command here in the ribbon. And for resources, this interface, any available resource will be highlighted yellow. So I can just click the resource to connect it. You can see it turns green, and I have a connection line shown as well. Press the Escape key. All is well, but we still need to update the flow for our metals. They have to go from here to there and then to the sink. So there's two steps in between, the first step and the last step. Let's go to the Process tab, open the Flow Editor, and for our sink process, if we just click it and now right-click, we can add a step before it or after it. So let's add a step before it called From Conveyor. And then after from conveyor, let's add a to conveyor step. So these two steps. Notice our link from the feeder to the sink. We don't need that anymore for this flow group, so we can right click the implementer. So you just right click and delete it. But now let's create a link from our feeder to this conveyor that is being implemented using a conveyor. But now to go from this conveyor to this conveyor, we have to use our human controller. So I'll click this icon to make it active, it's yellow. And now when I create a link between these two conveyors, you can see it's being implemented using the controller. So any resource that is connected to it will be used to perform this task. But we don't want to use a human to go from the start to the end of the conveyor, so I'll turn off the use of the human transport controller. Notice it's not yellow anymore. And now I'll click this node in the sink, it's transport node. And that is being implemented using the conveyor system. And now, if we run our simulation, we'll probably still have an issue. This is where transporting products to and from containers and previous or next steps comes into play. So for our CAN, let's go and take a look at the processes we have in the 3D world. I'll reset and look at the from conveyor. Notice that it is transporting in any product from a component container, like a connected path. So in order to get the solution working, what we can do is get from the previous process step, which in our case is the feeder. And then we're going to transport out the product, you can see here, its destination, to the next process, which is this conveyor. So let's close this out and then access the process for this conveyor here. And we're transporting in a product from the previous process, its source, very good. And then for its destination, we're transporting it to a component container. Well, we don't need to use that. We can just go to the next process because we have a way to get there. It's at the end of this conveyor. So now if we run the simulation, the can is moving, but it is stuck at our divert conveyor. So let's figure out why. Let's reset, look at our properties of our divert conveyor. And if we go to its routing rule, you can see that we're using a next transport node variable for our solution, but the process sync metals, this sync here, that is not directly connected to our divert conveyor, so it doesn't know how to get there. So what we can do is change the next transport node for this rule here to be the transport node in our from conveyor process, which we added here to the end of our divert conveyor, and it is connected. And then from this conveyor, we have a connection to go to this conveyor line. If we now run the simulation, here comes the can, it's moving, Whew, so far so good. Human takes it and puts it where it needs to go. And all is well in the world. 
to reset. And now look at the other rule variable called source node. So in this case, we only have one source for our products, and that is directly connected to our conveyor. So it doesn't make any sense to actually change both of these to be, you know, from the uh, product feeder itself. So what I'm going to do is go back to the home tab, and we'll just make our conveyor system a bit more complicated. So I'll select this conveyor, and holding the control key and select the I believe this is called a source process. I'll use the PMP command to disconnect them, just drag them away. And now let's add a crossing conveyor. So I'll go to my eCatalog panel, expand conveyors under models by type, click visual components. Let's add a crossing conveyor. I believe it's here. Yes. I notice we have many connections. So connect it there, the green arrow is good. Let's now connect our source and our conveyor, so select them both. Then use PMP command and connect them here. I'm going to right click and copy them, right click and paste them. Then use the PMP command to connect them to the right side of my crossing conveyor. Oop, let's go back there. Rotate them a bit. There we go. So we're looking for that green arrow. So now what we can do is for our feeder processes, we can make them a bit more simple. Let's go to our process tab, click processes. And for this feeder, let's see what we're doing. It's transporting in any product from a component container. And there's a reason I'm showing you this. The process itself is not making the products. It's the product creator behavior in this component. So let's close this out. And you want to select these feeders as components. So don't get confused here. If you're wondering, you know, where are the statements in this process for creating the parts, it's not doing that. Another behavior is handling that. It's just transporting in the products that are created and then transporting them out. So we have to go back to our home tab, select this process product feeder, go to its product creator tab here in the component properties. And notice it's using a batch it's making it every 10 seconds or repeating itself. So let's only make the soda cans in this component. So I'll delete, or you could actually just change this to be a single feed mode, and then select the part you want to make to be a soda can. We'll do the same thing for the other product feeder, this one here. Let's change it to be single, and the part it makes to be a plastic bottle. Its interval is 30 seconds. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. Let's use 10 seconds. And use 10 seconds as well for the other one. So just change the interval of both feeders to be 10 seconds. And now for our crossing conveyor, whoa, <laughs> what does it need to do? Well, we'll just use a simple rule in this case. So instead of cyclic rule, what we're going to use is a fixed rule. Or actually, no, we can just use cyclic rule. It's just that we'll only have one thing to do over and over again, and that is to route all the incoming products to the back port, which is right here in the crossing conveyor. And then when the products get to the divert conveyor, from there, we can use the source node to be from our product feeders. So if the product is coming from this transport node that is connected to my system, Let's then route based on that. So to make this easy for ourselves, let's say that this is making the plastic bottle. So this will be our feeder for plastics. Just change its name. And then do the same thing for our other feeder. It will be the feeder for our metals. So imagine you have different recycling bins for different types of materials. Then our cross conveyor, it'll just route everything here. Then for our divert conveyor, if the product is coming from the feeder of the metals, its transport node, then we know to route it straight. If it's coming from the feeder that's making plastics, we know to route it to the side. And that's what I just did here. If I make this bigger for you so you can see it. So for metals, route straight. For plastics, route to the side. So now, 
when we make those products. The cans work fine. So here it comes. And there they go. But our bottles are staying put. Now ask yourself, why is that happening? Why are the cans working, but the bottles not? It's because we don't have transport links from this transport node to other nodes in our layout. So if we reset, go back to the process tab, this is a flow issue, so let's click the flow button. And for our, if it's plastics, let's select that flow group. We only have one transport node that goes from, sorry, one transport link that goes from these two nodes, so we don't need that. Let's right click and delete. What we do need is from this feeder, to this sink. And let me reset. So from that feeder to here, preview looks good. And notice it is being created or implemented using a conveyor. So now if we run this simulation, what we expect to happen is that the can should move and the bottle should move onto our divert conveyor. Metal should go this way, bottle should go this way. And there you go. So that's just a couple of examples of how you can route using the standard rules of a routing rule behavior and how to use transport solution rule. For example, checking the source node of a product, where it comes from, where it needs to go next, and what its final destination is. Let's now reset. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.